Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I created this look for you guys yesterday. So yes, if you want to see how I created this, then keep on watching. Before I go into my eyes, I want to show you this product, which I have been using for a year, I guess. Um, I'm so happy I discovered this brand because some of you might know I have really sensitive skin. I will show you two pictures of how bad my skin can be. This is mainly a reaction to some products that I use. I always get those bumps around my mouth which is so annoying because it will show through my foundation. If you have sensitive skin like me, I know it's really hard to find brands that doesn't give irritation. Of course, I can't guarantee that this product won't give you irritation. I mean, every skin is different. But for me, this is amazing. If you want to see a more in-depth video on what products I'm currently using, then let me know in the comments. So now let's get into the eyes. So first I always prime my eyelids and I like to use the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. It keeps the eyeshadow in place all day. And now I'm going to use the Makeup Geek Corrupt Eyeshadow. This is a matte black shade. I do have to mention that I, I really don't like this eyeshadow to be honest. I really like Makeup Geek. Their eyeshadows are amazing and they have such an amazing pigment. Um, but with this black eyeshadow, I don't know what it is. It's my second one because my other one broke. But this one broke also and all the eyeshadows in my C palettes are destroyed with black eyeshadow. So I don't know. But this one is definitely not my favorite eyeshadow by Makeup Geek. So now I'm going to use the Makeup Geek Peaches and Cream eyeshadow. I'm going to blend this right above the line that I created. And this will be my transition shade. By blending this as my first shade in my crease will make it more easier to blend all the other eyeshadows right on top of it. Now I'm going to use the Anastasia Beverly Hills Burnt Orange eyeshadow. This is a very gorgeous shade. I've used it in a lot of videos. Whenever I do a warm eyeshadow tutorial, I, I guess I always include this eyeshadow. It's just very pretty. I'm going to blend this right on top of the line that I created using a Morphe M506 brush. I think this is a brush that every makeup artist needs in their life. It's just a very tiny blending brush, which is really nice. Now I'm going back in with the Beaches and Cream eyeshadow by Makeup Geek, just to make sure that the edges are well blended out. Because the Burnt Orange eyeshadow by Anastasia is much darker, so it can be kind of harsh, so I always make sure to go back in with a lighter shade to blend it out. Now I'm going to use the Anastasia Sienna eyeshadow. My crease was looking great, the eyeshadows were well blended out, so then I feel sort of safe to go in with a darker shade. I like to first check this before I go in with a darker shade. So when I apply this dark shade and my crease wasn't blended out, I have to fix everything. So I like to prevent that and I first blend everything nicely out before I go in with a darker shade. So what I did was the same, I just blended this shade right on top of the crease line. So now I'm going to use the Makeup Geek Corrupt Eyeshadow again. That eyeshadow that I don't really like. But I do have to say the pigmentation of this eyeshadow is amazing. That's why I keep using it. But it does give a mess in my C palette. So what what is a really nice eyeshadow alternative? The Anastasia Noir Eyeshadow is also really great. So I intensified my crease line a little bit by making it more black and I'm going to use the, Mor the Morphe M506 brush and I'm going to blend it out so it's less harsh. But you can still see that dark line really clearly so whenever I see this I know I have to go back in with a lighter shade to make sure it's more blended out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going back in with the burnt orange eyeshadow and I'm going to blend this around the edges. And even though you can still see that black very clearly, I know with some concealer you will fix this. So I use the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer in the shade NC15. And I'm going to apply this all over the eyelids and also straight underneath that crease line. If you made any mistakes, this will fix everything and leave you with a very pretty clear base. So that you're ready to apply shades on the eyelid. So now I'm going to use a white eyeshadow which is by Makeup Geek and it's called White Lies. I'm going to use this at the beginning part of my eyelid using a MAC 242 brush. This is my favorite brush for applying shades on the eyelid. So now I'm going to use a light blue shade from the Morphe 35B eye palette. I don't own a shade like this in a single eyeshadow like Makeup Geek sells. So I had to use this palette. Um, the eyeshadows in the Morphe 35B eye palette are very pigmented. It's a really nice palette and I've used it quite a lot. So I'm going to use this light blue shade in the middle part of my eyelids. 
And if you want it more blended towards the white, you can mix those shades together. Now I'm going to use the Neptune eyeshadow by Makeup Geek, which is such a gorgeous blue shade. I'm going to use this around the outer V on my eyelids. And I'm also going to apply this right on top of the blue shade. I wanted this Neptune eyeshadow to be more of the focus, but the light blue shade from the Morphe 35B palette just to be a sort of transition to go from, from, the, from white to blue. So I just needed a light blue shade. Now to intensify the whole eye look, I'm going to back in with the Makeup Geek Corrupt Eyeshadow and I'm going to first press this in the outer V and I'm going to use that same Morphe M506 brush to blend it out and I'm going to blend this on top of the Neptune eyeshadow and also on my crease line. Since I applied that black eyeshadow in my crease a little bit more intense, it connects really greatly with the black shade in the outer V. So I did this on purpose. I had quite some fallout from the black and the blue eyeshadow, so I need to clean it up with some concealer and this is also the reason why I always wait with applying powder underneath the eyes because I know I will always have fallout somehow. Now for my eyeliner I use the felt tip liner by NYX and in my waterline I'm going to use the dark side pencil by Anastasia Beverly Hills in my waterline. I didn't go for a wing. I did this off camera by the way, I just applied a coat along the lash line. So nothing really special, I think you all know how to do this. And I'm going back in with the Makeup Geek Corrupt eyeshadow and I'm going to apply this really close towards my tight line. And whenever I go for a black lower lash line I always try to connect that black eyeshadow really close to the eye pencil in my one line so sometimes I even apply the eyeshadow on top of the lower lash line. If you wear contacts I would not suggest to do this because it will get in your eye. So now I'm using that light blue shade from the Morphe 35B palette again. I press this right underneath the black shade and I didn't tap off the excess product of my brush because I wanted the blue to be very obvious so I needed a lot of pigments so I didn't tapped off the excess product if you know what I mean. Now I'm going to use that Neptune eyeshadow by Makeup Geek in the middle part to blend those black and light blue shade a little bit more better. So now I'm going to curl my lashes. I always do this. I don't show this always in my videos um, but I think this is necessary. Now I'm coating a layer of mascara and the lashes that I went for are by my own lash company Anitude and this is the style Sultry which are so gorgeous. And yes, this is already the end of the tutorial. I'm so happy with the outcome of this. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. The blue and the browns look very pretty together. If you want to see more of these cut crease tutorials, let me know in the comments because I really enjoy making these. And yes, of course, I hope to see you in my next video. Bye guys!